Hey guys, so if you guys have seen my, uh, let's see, the brace scale video on uh, the Carpenter Square, a lot of you guys wanted to know how to use Pythagorean theorem to figure these things out. Okay, that's basically the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or the three four five method. Okay, but quick review on the other method of doing this on the brace scale. If you look at your square, not all squares have these, but if you look at your square right across here. These numbers, this is basically what you use when you're making a diagonal brace, okay? So if you have a piece here and a piece here, how long is this section here, okay? Let's take this one. This is a little easier example, okay? This is a, uh, an equilateral triangle where the two side legs are going to be the same. Then you have your hypotenuse over here. We'll go over the terminology in a minute. Uh, but basically, if you look on here, say for example that those two equal sides are at 45 inches, okay, 45 and 45. This right here, the 63 and 0.64, that's going to be the length of that diagonal bracing, okay. But a lot of guys were mentioning, hey, use Pythagorean theorem, don't use the square for this anymore. Well, if you guys that don't know how to use Pythagorean theorem, um, that's what this video is on. All right, now Pythagoras is a mathematician that is long since dead and gone, but he came up with a cool theorem or way of doing things that work really, really well, all right? This is the formula that he came up with. There we go, zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. All right, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, if you look at your triangle, either one of these, first notice that it has a right angle. That's what this little uh, square part is. This is a square all right, at a 90 degree angle, right there, 90 degrees, all right. Now, the angle across from that, or the, uh, the leg right across from that, okay, is always going to be labeled as C, all right, just the letter C. Now, C is also known as your hypotenuse, okay. I don't know where that word came from, but that's what it is. That's a hypotenuse, okay. So, when you're trying to figure these things out for your diagonal bracing, all right, your C, that's going to be your hypotenuse, and that's what this is actually solving for, okay? So let's plug in some numbers to kind of illustrate what, uh, what I'm talking about here. If, let's just say, we'll use this one as an example. We'll make this one 3, this is 4, you already know the method, this one you already know is going to be 5. All right, but we'll just prove it through the uh, the theorem, okay? So over here, we have the one side, which is 3 plus the 4 equals something over here that we don't know, okay? The C. Square this, square that. 3 squared, that's simply 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 squared, 4 times 4, which is 16. That's going to equal 25. All right. Keep in mind that this is squared. All right. You need to figure out what the square root of this is. Okay. So the square root of 25 is going to be 5. All right. Hopefully, I kind of sort of explain that a little bit where it halfway kind of makes sense. If you don't get it, don't sweat it too bad. All right. But that's basically the method. Okay. You have a squared plus, C, uh, plus b squared equals c squared, all right? That's Pythagorean theorem. That's all it is. A couple things to keep in mind is just you have to have that 90 degree angle. That's what makes it a right triangle on each one of these. And you're always trying to figure out this one here, okay? Now, if you're given this as an example and you're given this as an example, you basically rework the formula to come up with this one, okay? Or same thing over here. If you're only given this one and this one, if you're only given your C and your B, you got to figure out A. So that means you just got to rearrange and rewrite the uh, formula over here. All right. Now, this is not a video on how to do uh, all the algebra that is involved. This is just to kind of show you another way without having to use the, uh, the framing square. Okay. Now, when would you use this in construction or you know building layout or whatever? Say, for example, that you're working something over here where, let's take a wall, say you're framing up a wall, you get your floor right here, and you got your one wall coming up here. Obviously, you want to make sure that your wall is going up totally straight and vertical and erect. 
So you want, obviously, a 90 degree angle here. So what you do, for getting all this math, for getting Pythagoras and all that, if you can simply remember three, four, five, you're golden. All you need to do is measure out on the floor three feet. Okay, so say we got your three feet right there. You measure up the wall four feet right there. So this one across here, when you measure it, you know that that should equal five feet. All right. Again, that's just using Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> that's how to make sure that the wall is straight. Then if you actually rotate this around, you have to check it from another angle as well. Make sure that the wall is not going to you know, be tipping this way or tipping that way. You have to make sure that you know, everything is square. So you might be checking for square in you know, three different directions to make sure that everything is, is square and true. So you're building everything how it's supposed to be built. All right? Nothing is worse than building a, a wall or some sort of structure, or even just a small box. That you know you have the you know a great design and a great look and everything's coming together and you put the lid on, it's out of square, okay? Because you didn't check to make sure that it's square the entire way. Oh well, my table saw square. It might not be. You know, it saw by just a little bit. Those those little increments are going to add up over time, and all of a sudden you're not going to be square. So you have to constantly check over and over and over through every stage of the build to make sure am I still square? Am I still square? Am I still square? Measure three, four, and that last one better be five. Okay? So that is basically the uh, Pythagorean theorem on uh, you know how to do it and how it kind of sort of applies to woodworking. Um, again, if you don't get this part over here, um, if you can't remember how to take the square root or how to square something, hey, don't sweat it. If you can remember three, four, five, you're pretty much golden. A simple way to remember it is. How many sides does a triangle have? Because that's really what you're looking for. Start with a triangle. So you got three, and then you just keep going. Four or five. All right, that's it. Also, you don't have to use three, four, five. You can go up in increments. You can use, say, six, eight, and ten. It's going to be the exact same thing. One side is six, one side is eight. That last side has to be ten. Okay? Now, where is that useful? Well, when you're scaling something up. Okay? If something is much, much bigger, all right, instead of building a wall that's 8 feet tall, say you're building up a wall for, you know, whatever reason, that's 16 feet tall, all right, you're doing some major framing stuff. You don't want to just measure out 3 feet, okay, because that board can, you know, move along that way. You want to measure out a little bit further than that, you know, measure out to 6 feet, measure out to 8 feet, and then you should have that 10 feet diagonal, okay? So, again, that's the Pythagorean theorem, or uh, just what I like to call it, 3, 4, 5. Thanks for watching, and uh, as always, check out the Facebook page, uh, Project Woodworks, and uh, just look it up on Facebook. It should come up. You'll see what, uh, what I've been working on. Also, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, whines, bitches, moans, groans, please leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching, guys.